All right, so in this lesson, we're going to go ahead and continue the um, detailing portion of our metal piece here. So let's just go ahead and hit our space bar, and we're going to jump into our middle view, middle view here, or our side view, I'm sorry. And let's just grab our faces here for our mute button. And I just want to go ahead and make sure that I don't have anything selected on the opposite side there. And I'm just going to go ahead and scale these up just a little bit, not too much. Um, I want to have at least some room so I'm going to be able to basically add edge loops so that it's all going to maintain its shape properly. So now that I have that done, let's just come back here to our perspective view. And we're going to my shelf and I'm just going to go ahead and inset here. Okay, And that should be um, a big enough inset for us to go ahead and get all that detail in. So now let's just get, go ahead and extrude in here. Okay. And that's you don't want to extrude in too deep so that it's you know basically going to look weird, but that should be fine. Um as long as you're pretty much like right on the base of the the actual iPhone body, you should be fine and that's why I went and turned that on. Okay, so now let's just come up here to edit mesh. And we're going to go ahead and duplicate faces off here. Okay. And we'll just deselect that portion of the of the metal piece there. Just go ahead and center our pivots there. Pull that out. And I'm going to add that metal portion to the layer there and just hide it. And we'll go back and turn on our wireframe here. And so now we have to figure out, well, how am I going to go ahead and cut that circular geometry into this because if I do it a certain way it's going to cause problems for us to go ahead and model so let's just go ahead and grab our edge loop tool here okay and I'm going to add one right here in the middle and just go ahead and double click that edge so I can reselect it and just make sure that I sort of flatten this out pretty good okay and pull this down now I don't like I said I don't want to add a an edge loop running vertical here and this is because what's going to happen if we do it that way it's going to tend to not smooth properly and it's not going to maintain its shape whenever we need it to and whenever we add some edge loops so I'm going to have to show you a way to go ahead and do this properly and the first thing I want to go ahead and do is just grab this minus button and I'm just simply going to duplicate this down okay and I'm going to go ahead and try and place this right in the middle here scale it down so I have something to go ahead and basically shape our um, button around and the hole around okay let's go ahead and scale this up just a little bit okay so now let's just go ahead and add our edge loops here and I'm add one here to the top or one above it and I'm also going to add one here below it and just making sure that I go ahead and flatten this out here Okay, so let's go ahead and pull that down. Okay, so now I need to get back into our perspective view here. Grab that minus button that we duplicated off. I'm simply just going to go ahead and rotate it here in the Y direction, 180 degrees. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I tend to like to do that just so I can see exactly what I'm doing here. Okay, and now that we have that basically placed in there, I'm just going to go ahead here and in the face selection mode. I'm going to grab these four faces. Simply just extrude in. Okay. Somewhat uniformly. Okay, and we'll go ahead and sort of move this over into the middle there. And you can see where right away that these faces here at the bottom and these faces here at the top are sort of malformed and they aren't basically shaped properly but that's okay I just want to go ahead here and shape these vertices real quick just so that I know exactly of how I want to go ahead and shape this okay so let's just go ahead and move these over grab these top verts and we're gonna go ahead and push them down scale them in a little bit there go ahead and grab those two grab these two 
grab the middle one, just shape it a little bit. Okay. And that looks like it's going to basically smooth properly. So let's go ahead and scale that up just a touch so it's a little bit larger. Okay. And now what I want to go ahead and do here is basically delete these these two edges and also these two edges. Okay. And I'm also going to delete the vertices off of them. But before I go ahead and do that, I need to make sure that I draw the edges that we, we're going to need. So let's go ahead and draw one there. And we're going to go ahead and draw one here. Okay. We're also going to grab and draw one from this vertice to here, but also to the corner there. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing here for this side. Okay, and this way whenever I go to smooth that, that's going to maintain its shape properly. So now let's go ahead and delete these edges off real quick. Okay. And you can see where that really is going to give us some fairly good quad geometry. So we're going to do the same thing here for those top edges. Oops, and I deleted one too many. Just deselect that edge there. Okay, now you can see where that geometry is going to be really um, well drawn out. So let's go ahead here and just delete these two edges. Okay, and we'll go ahead and delete those two edges. And now you can see where we're going to have some really nice quad geometry. So let's go ahead and add a couple extra edge loops here. Okay, and the easiest way to do this is we're going to grab our split polygon tool again. Okay, just go ahead and draw this out real quick. And now I can basically add our edge loops in here that I need. I'm also going to have to go ahead and add an edge loop running here vertically, right in the middle, one and one on basically each side there. Okay. Let's go ahead and grab our split polygon tool again, and just draw that in and hit enter so that it uh, merges those vertices. And we'll do the same thing here for the other side. And now you can see where we have some very, very serious and very clean quad geometry. So basically, let's just go ahead and bring back our metal piece here. And we're just simply going to push this back in. Okay. Making sure that that's all going to smooth properly. Okay. And this top portion is going to be a little bit off. So let's go ahead and add some edge loops here above that side mute button and I'm just eyeballing this to sort of divide that geometry of how I think it should be divided and we'll go ahead and add a couple here below our mute button and if we go ahead and relook at that you can see that that's going to be a lot better in terms of smoothing okay so let's go ahead and select our mute button here just the edge and we'll simply just extrude this in Okay. Just making sure that that's going to be um, deep enough for us to go ahead and have some depth on, and that looks fine. Okay. Grab these two edges here, and we're basically just going to scale these in, so we get a a fairly good shape here. Okay. Grab these bottom verts try and match that bottom hole a little bit better and that looks okay and I want to go ahead here and add some edge loops to the body for there and for there so it's really going to maintain its shape fairly well and now I just need to go ahead and add some edge loops here onto what is our mute button here okay 
do one for the back also one for the top so we get that sort of beveled look and we need to make sure that we go ahead and add the edge loops here for the top and one here in the middle so that it maintains its shape as you can see there okay so now let's go ahead and cut in that circle just select these four faces make sure I don't have anything in the back there selected and we'll go ahead here and extrude in okay and we'll also push this down a little bit and then we'll go ahead and extrude down just making sure that that's going to be proper and nice and <clears throat> okay if you look at the iPhone 4 there's actually no button here um, it's sort of a hole but I don't want to leave this basically empty um, because whenever I go to texture this our concept art is going to be a little bit different and so what I want to go ahead and do here is just basically duplicate these buttons off okay and I'm gonna leave that button in there I'm actually gonna create a button for it and this is just gonna be for how I'm gonna go ahead and actually texture this okay so just selecting the border edge here I'm gonna go ahead and basically extrude this in and I'm just simply gonna add a couple extra edge loops here so it maintains its shape fairly well okay and smooth this one and I need to go ahead and add a couple extra edge loops here so we get sort of a very hard beveled look and that looks pretty good there let's go ahead and delete that minus button off since we aren't using it add our edge loops here for what is going to be the hole for our mute button here Okay, and we will go ahead and grab both of these and push those back in there. And that looks pretty good. And I might need to simply just go ahead and adjust some of these verts at the top here. And that's okay. Um, that's pretty normal. looks good just turn off our wireframe just to double check okay and that looks good but like I said um, if you look at the iPhone 4 actual blueprint there's no button here um, this is more of a hole but like I said I want to actually add this in so that whenever I go to texture it I can add a little bit of extra texture to this and it's just gonna give us that um, much different of an iPhone look okay so now let's come down here to the bottom portion of our iPhone and what I want to do before I actually start working on the back here and I'm not going to make any cuts, cuts I'm just simply going to add some extra geometry in here just so that I know exactly what I'm going to be doing okay and I want to add some edge loops uh, one in the middle of each one of these holes here for our um, dust grades Okay, but I also want to go ahead here and grab these four faces of which are going to be our USB porthole. Okay, and I'm basically just going to scale that up a little bit, and then I'm going to inset a little bit here. Okay, and I'm just trying to line this up so that whenever I bring the body of our iPhone back, it's going to be easier for me to go ahead and add this. In, um, cut into the body and also into the metal piece here and that's where we'll be cutting apart this metal piece so that we can have some depth and some more detail on here okay so I just want to go ahead here and draw in some extra edge loops for this just so that I can basically maintain all this stuff properly okay and as you can see I'm always drawing one in the middle and then basically one on each side you can see there and I'm just turning on the wireframe just to make sure that that's going to smooth fine and yeah they both look okay okay so I'm going to basically call it a pause for this lesson or um, end this lesson here and 
in the next lesson we'll come back and start working on the camera portion of our iPhone and that's it